Okay, good day all, good uh, evening in Nigeria, good afternoon in the U.S. Um, another beautiful day. As usual, I hope we are keeping safe. Okay, I think we have enough people, uh, 45 people already, so we will kick off uh, right away. Uh, no need to uh, hold it on. Thank you all. Today is uh, the fifth series in our in our lecture series of how to uh, do export uh, from Nigeria to the U.S. And uh, thank you all so much for your DMs. It's been very very impressive. I've received. Uh, so many inspiring dms uh, and you see that there are so many people um, who are really excited about going into export again like i said look um, export is not something that nigeria can afford to joke with it's a necessity you know um, as of yesterday exchange rate was already at about 450 460 um, IMF has agreed to loan. I think they are looking at giving Nigeria an emergency $3.4 billion. Uh, you will see in the news today, uh, the president is asking for $850 billion. Uh, so the condition of the country is really critical, and that criticality is going to affect everybody. Uh, the only way to get out of it is for you to prepare yourself. Uh, definitely you have to be ready so um, without much uh, introduction I'm going to go straight to the point we have a lot to cover today food is not something that is uh, so straightforward uh, one because it is something you eat uh, so any country will always try to be extra careful uh, when it comes to food um just before i go on you know and i'm going to react to some of the dms i've been receiving um a lot of them um a lot of you have been you know saying things like um um what can i go into i want to go into palm oil what do i do you see again that is the essence of this series and that is the essence of me starting from the scratch from the introduction uh, to the essentials, to finding buyers, to fashion, and now to, to food. So again, you know, we need to get something straight. Success is hard work. If you think you're just going to sit down there and, uh, you know, you watch this series and you don't act on it, you will remain the same. You know, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not going to tell you that, look, once you pour items inside a bag, you export it and that is it. No, there's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of learning. Like I said before, uh, the content of this training is only about three, if, if highest 5% of what you need to become a, a real, a, a millionaire when it comes to export. And the remaining 95, because I can't cover everything in this series, uh, is something I offer in a, a five day training course. Uh, you know, and that is going to be sometime in June, um, hopefully based on how this lockdown goes. All right. Um, again, like I said, to be successful in this, you need to have a plan. So when you keep sending me DM that says, oh, what should I do? I am not the one to tell you what to do. Or some of you will send me DM and say, find me a buyer. I've shown you the steps to find a buyer. You know, so again, go back, look at those series. You know, I, I really, I, look, I've taken my time to prepare these courses. Go back, look at this series, especially series three, how to find buyers. You know, when you continue to send me DM, how do I find buyers? It shows you are not serious, you know. And there are a lot of people who are serious. You know, I was, a lady was uh, sent me, uh, DM the other day they are into coconut uh, um, coconut uh, fruit. That's one of the reasons I brought this. You know, this is exactly the type of uh, product that they make. Uh, this is the uh, pressed coconut juice or something like that. 
and we are going to talk about all this later on but you know there is a lot to do a lot of opportunity but you have to work hard again start small that is what i tell people learn the ins and out of the business because i can give you as much information but you still have to do a lot on your own uh, start small uh, learn the ins and out and then we'll go from there so on today's uh, topic uh, food export to the u.s I'm going to be looking at, you know, advantages of going into food. Um, just talk a little bit about it. Uh, we're going to look at the U.S. laws as it affects food. We'll take a little look at uh, Nigerian laws as it affects food export. We'll talk a little again about finding food buyers. Uh, and then I'll give you a little tips as to some of the things, um, you know, uh, on uh, on um sourcing your products packaging shipping storage and warehousing now packaging is very important and that's something we will try and use uh, a, a lot of time uh, to deal with again some people are asking will they have this video yes um, it's always better to be in the live series because i will ask uh, give everybody opportunity to ask questions but again, you know, you can find this and other series on YouTube. Search Unduka Ude uh, and you will see the series there. Again, please, if you haven't watched series one to four, take your time, follow it sequentially. You know, when in some of these videos, I will jump things that I have already done. So food export, um, just like I've said, in, I said in the fashion export, um, we always need to consider what we call product market uh, uh, fit. And again, product market fit means that you are sending products that you know the consumers in the market you are going to are going to be interested in. You know, um, there are a lot of things that obviously we eat in Nigeria that you may not find substantial uh, number of people eating. Uh, so let's let's be wise when we are choosing the type of products that we want to go into exporting. All right, uh, so that is that. The second advice I will also give is find your niche. And again, this is so, so important. You know, there's a lady that uh, I've helped a couple of times to bring things to the US or we have helped a couple of times. And when you ask her what she does, uh, you know, a small uh, business run by the family, but she's into everything. She's into pepper, tomato, this yam, flour, rice, you know, and I was helping her to take rice. And when I looked at the rice, it had a lot of, you know, the quality wasn't good. And that is what happens when you try to do too many things. You know, you need to focus on one product put all your energy, all your resources into that product and make that product the best. You know, I cannot bring rice I, I, and, and we will be truthful to you if you come to us and say, oh, help us to sell this on Amazon. We are first of all going to look at the quality of the products. Like I said, when we start helping you to, to sell on Amazon, if your products do not sell within three months, within 90 days, or you don't sell a lot, we will ship the items free to you back to Nigeria. So because of that, our commitment to ship the items free back to you in Nigeria, we are going to first of all look at it and make sure it meets the quality of what we sell. So don't just think that, oh, because we are going to be able to help people, you just bring anything. No, quality is very important. And again, when I say find your niche, there is a lot of sense in finding your niche. Um, th there is a lot of sense in finding uh, your niche and, you know, um, specialize in one or two products, you know, and again, by specializing in one or two products, you become the best. All your energy, all your resources is on that product. And before you know it, you become uh, very good at it. You are able to get products in bulk. By getting in bulk, you are able to obviously lower your cost. And, and those type of things. So why food? Why is food a key uh, export uh, material to US 
that has the potential of making you a millionaire. You know, now the great thing about the US is look, they they cannot produce everything either because of the nature of their soil. So there's a lot that they would depend on other countries to provide. You know, so so that is one. And then um organic a lot of the food in the US and most of these uh, advanced countries are inorganic. They are artificial, you know, fertilizer, uh, lab generated such that they, they, you know, within, you know, you, you have chickens that are big within 21 days. So there is no way those things will have the real nutrient of a chicken that you have trained for six months. There's going to be a, a big difference. You know, and that's why if you look at the U.S. population, a lot of people are obese. You know, a lot of people have diseases. You know, we're talking about this coronavirus thing. You'll be wondering why is it that U.S. has as high as a million, over a million cases? You know, it's because of the quality of the food. So what you are seeing is that a lot of companies have come to realize that there's a, a, a you know, a lack of good quality food here that you now have what they call organic stores and then the normal stores. Amazon bought a company called Whole Food. Whole Food sells purely organic products. They bought that company for $13.7 billion about three years ago to tell you the potentials of organic food. And, and it is, you know, when you, when you buy, see an organic product, say palm oil, and you see the non-organic, the difference is usually two to three times the price. And Nigeria, we have, you know, virtually everything we do is organic. It's not none of those lab generated. So there's a huge potential. And again, this is a little assignment. When you go online to Amazon to search, use the word organic in front before you search for a product. So for example, you can search for organic plantain chips and then search for just plantain chips and look at the results that come up and compare the prices search for palm oil search for organic palm oil try it with different different things you begin to see what i'm talking about there is a huge potential to bring in products at a good margin so that is one the other one obviously is the agoa legislation i've told you guys that you know, we can bring in these products into the U.S. duty-free because of the AGOA legislation. If you don't know about AGOA legislation, uh, I think it was series two, two and three, I talked about it in depth. You know, so go back and look at that and, and see, you know. And then another reason why I think we need to really focus on food is you know, you have many companies in Nigeria who are into food, um, but they are not ready to export. And this is when I talked about uh, brand transfer in series three, how to find buyers. This is something that you can easily do. Go and meet some of those companies. Can you provide, produce your own packaging? Because a lot of us will not have the money to buy packaging machines and those things. But you need to start using some level of creativity. If you have enough money to work on the, the labeling, you know, why not go to some of those companies and say, look, can you make a hundred of this for me? I will put my label on it or something. And then, you know, they are making it for you. You are exporting. You know, food is one that I think uh, there's low capital requirements and there is a huge demand in the US, especially for organic food. So that is that. Now let's look at the laws. I'm going to look uh, basically at, uh, let me start with the Nigerian law. I already went through this the other time, uh, some of the requirements you need before you do general export. Uh, but now I will look more at uh, the food. You know, so obviously you need to have your, ex your company registered before you want to start doing serious food export. Have your company registered, you know, as a business with CAC. Um, a lot of you already have that. Uh, if you don't, please get that done. Any lawyer can help you. Uh, the other one is once you have that company registered, go to Nigerian Export Promotion Council, 
NEPC. They have an office at Papapa for those in Lagos and in other places they have all over. And uh, at NEPC, you will be asking for an export license. Very easy to do. They are not going to ask you for any bribe or anything. That's one good thing about, I like about that establishment. Then for food again, you're going to need NAFDAQ certification. Unfortunately, food needs it, you know, because the U.S. knows about NAFDAQ. So when you are bringing in your product, they want to see, oh, has this product gone through regulatory requirements? Okay, now that may be, uh, you know, for, you know, when you're trying to bring packaged foods like this. But if you are trying to sell in wholesale, maybe to another manufacturer, uh, some of those requirements may vary. But, you know, verify that. It's not NMPC, it is NEPC, Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Okay? Uh, again, uh, so that is that. And then during the export process, uh, one of the things you need, because we are talking about exporting through AGOA, you know, and if you are exporting through AGOA, it must show that the item is coming from from an AGOA eligible country such as Nigeria. And that is where you need what they call certificate of origin. You know, certificate of origin, you get it from the uh, MAN, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. And I'll say it here, that is that there's something they do in MAN that I'm not very happy with. And I don't know if there are people in government who are listening, if they can do something about it. When you go to get that license, they will try to mandate you to register for a year's membership with MAN manufacturer. I don't know how much it is now. It's about 50, 60, you know, and that is not really helping export. You know, can somebody go there to get a certificate of their origin and you just charge them a flat fee, you know, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. You know, charging them a, 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 a membership for a year, I don't think is right. So, uh, if there's anybody with man here, um, that is something that uh, will be very important to look at. Then the next one is uh, depending on the volume, uh, Nigerian Exports Proceeds Form. So, for those of you that want to do in volume, Nigerian Export Proceeds Form is necessary. You get it from any bank. Unfortunately, a lot of bank branches don't even know about it. You know, and that tells you how serious we are with Nigerian uh, export. So, Nigerian export proceeds form, uh, you use it to document the value of your export uh, for FX reasons because you are now into an, um, an exporter. And then, obviously, you're going to need your commercial invoice, you're going to need your packing list. Those ones I'm going to treat a little at the end because every other thing you can get from, from el el elsewhere. Um, so those are the key things you're going to need. Again, like I said, business registration from CAC, uh, export license from uh, any Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC. You need your NAFDAC. Uh, in some cases, you may need food analysis reports, depending on what it is you are trying to export, and that will depend on the actual item. So uh, that is a case-by-case -case basis. Um, obviously, a certificate of origin from MAN, uh, Nigerian Export Proceeds Form, Commercial Invoice Packing List, and at times Food Analysis Report. All right, so uh, again, I'm going to rush through some of these things uh, because we've done it before. Uh, series 3, we treated finding bias for, for general items. And if you look at the nine steps I gave you to find buyers for your export product, all of them will work for food. And I'll go through them again. One is partnership. You know, since I started this series, I've received probably more DMs. Well, not up to maybe 50% uh, of the DMs are from people who are here in the U.S. who are looking to go into food export, uh, imports. So for the U.S., they are importing it from Nigeria. And a lot of them have been asking, where do I get reliable suppliers? So that is, again, why I say partnership is very, very, very important. You know, partnership is very, very, very important. Um, look at family, friends, 
uh, again, a lot of people are asking questions. I'm going to answer your questions at the end. So uh, just hold on, take note of the questions. At the end of the series, I will answer as many questions as possible. So again, partner with family and friends over here. And again, like I said, to make the partnership work, don't tell them, hey, I have uh, potato chips, send it for me over there and send back the money. No, it has to be a partnership. You know, you do a lot of the work. Follow some of the steps I've given you to find buyers. When you find buyers, you can now talk to them. Again, like I said, a lot of companies here are more comfortable dealing with people that are here already. So, you know, do all the work, send them email, communicate with them. And then when it's time, partner with somebody here. And then, you know, they will be the, your front in dealing with the company. So partnership is one. Again, the other one is selling to manufacturers and packagers. Uh, that is how a lot of people can start. But again, it's not a very lucrative way because now you are selling in wholesale. Uh, again, the example I like to give is Ivory Coast. Uh, Ivory Coast makes about, I think, the world's highest uh, amount of cocoa. They do about three point something billion dollars of uh, cocoa export. Their biggest customer is uh, Mars, and Mars takes that three point, uh, you know, the chocolate company. They take the three point something billion dollars, and they have a sale of about eighteen twenty billion dollars a year. Uh, so you can see the big difference. So the second one is selling to manufacturers or packagers. These are people who will take the raw materials, maybe like raw cashew nuts, uh, raw plantain, uh, raw granuts, and then they will convert it into packaged goods. Uh, so that is another one you can look at. Um, the other one is selling to existing Amazon buyers and uh, sellers. In this case, you ought to have a brand. You ought to have something packaged. You ought to have something like this that you are selling to them. You know, and again, I talked about brand transfer where uh, you are manufacturing the products, uh, but the name that it is being sold is the name of a company over here. Uh, and it's very easy to find such people uh, go online, you know, uh, go to Amazon, look at people who are selling the type of products that uh, you are interested in. Talk to them and say, look, we can make this for you at XYZ price. And you just put your name on it. A lot of them will be happy. That again is how China became the, the, the biggest exporter in the world. So look at all these things. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, then you have sell yourself on Amazon. This is actually very good for food. You know, I will recommend selling yourself on Amazon if you can cross all these other hurdles. And uh, again, uh, we are going to help you on that. On Friday, I am going to break down the process that we have to help small businesses sell on Amazon. So again, that's why I said all this is a series don't miss the one on Friday where I will teach you how to sell on Amazon. I think for most people into food, the best way to go will be to sell your products directly on Amazon. Another one is conference attendance. Very good. Um, selling on, uh, going to conferences, but this is for those who really have a lot of money. In the US, there's a lot of conferences every year where the big stores, the Walmarts, you know, the Targets, you know, multi-billion dollar companies that buy in bulk uh, coming to look at what is out there. So that is one you need to consider if you have the potentials. Uh, another one is obviously build your brand. Um, you know, so you're going to have to develop your website. You know, when people are searching for uh, hibiscus uh, tea, they should be able to see you on top. Uh, it takes a lot of work. Uh, in my five-day course, we look at that. I think some of those course, uh, we look at that. Social media is another one. There is a company in Ghana that does sheer butter. You know, it's owned by a lady and she is making a killing on selling online, Instagram and Facebook. You know, she shows them doing these things originally and she has customers over the world. So there are various ways you can go about it. 
uh, as usual. Then online adverts as well. But for food, I think my biggest, uh, my preferred way is going to be for you to sell directly on Amazon. And uh, we'll talk more on that on, on Friday. Amazon and the partnership may be some of the good ways to go. So now let's assume because understanding the mindset of people here is very important if you want to sell here. So let's assume you, you have your, the products that you are interested in selling, right? And, um, you know, you've done everything, you've done your packaging, you have your NAVDAC. How can it sell over here? You know, now, you, and this is where labeling and packaging comes, becomes very important. So one thing you will notice is, and that's why I have some of these samples here. You know, like I told you, Americans, you know, I would say most of them are lazy. Um, because, you know, they don't walk a lot. Everybody is in their cars, they're driving and all, all, you know. So the nutritional value of your food is so, so important here. You know, I, I, when I was doing the introduction, this is a, a sample product, uh, plantain flour made in Nigeria. And if you look at the packaging, um, you know, some of you may not see it clearly. If you look at the packaging, uh, it doesn't say a lot in terms of nutritional value. You know, it doesn't say a lot. And, you know, these are good quality products that if packaged well, will sell heavily. Now, look at a typical U.S. Uh, food. You know, you can, you can see the back. I'm, I'm sure you can see the back. Virtually half of it is dedicated to uh, the labels where they talk about the nutritional content of the food. This whole white section is talking about the nutritional content. And nobody, I can categorically say that, you know, very few, maybe 5% or maximum 10% of US buyers will buy any food without looking at this. And what is the main thing they look at? The calorie content. Because when you eat a lot of calories, you gain weight. So they are so particular about calories. There is no food you will see in the US where they don't list how many calories there is. Very, very important. This is chips. This is another one. You can see again, more than half of the packaging is dedicated to the calories. And this is where I said that depending on the type of food, you may need to do a food analysis report. And that is the report that will give you all this. There are companies in Nigeria that do it. You know, this is uh, vegetables, you know, packaged salad, vegetables you used to make salad. How many of us have gone to buy vegetables in Nigeria and they show you the calorie content? That tells you how important it is. Look at vegetable here. This has 15 calories. And you can see it always takes a huge portion of, of the packaging. Because it is very, very important. There is nothing you will buy. This is bread here. Bread. It has it here. The number of calories on the bread. There's nothing you will buy here. In Nigeria, we just package bread and put it in nylon and that is it. Coconut water. You see? You can see clearly. They always take... Because this is so important. If you don't have this on your, in your product coming into the U.S., it's going to be very difficult. Now, if you are selling to manufacturers, they will now take care of this. It's not a problem. You know, but again, when you are selling to manufacturers, the profit potential reduces drastically. You know, this is a water. See here, this is a, a you know, what do you call it? Colored water, power rate. The calorie is zero, but they still have to write it. If these people did not write the calories, I can tell you virtually nobody will buy this. You know, this is what engine, uh, said engine oil, vegetable oil. You can see the calories, the nutritional content boldly written. And they write it in such a way that the boldest thing on it is the calorie. They don't joke with the calories. You know, um, this is peanut butter, granite butter. Again, this whole red part. You know, you can see how big it is compared to the, the, the bottle. is dedicated to, uh, to the calorie content. Uh, this is a clean up. You know, they use it to 
to spray your pot before you fry your egg so that it doesn't stick. Zero calories, but they still list it. You know, this is tea. Uh, it also has it. Uh, this is honey. You know, it, this one is not too clear, but half of the label at the back is dedicated to calories. And then, apart from making sure you have this on your labels, another important thing you need to look at is do catchy designs if you want your product to sell. You know, catchy design. Look at, you can see how catchy this is. You know, when you see a packaging like this, I mean, it's the, the packaging has already sold the product. You know, the, uh, two years ago, I went for an exhibition in Miami, uh, Miami Food and uh, uh, Beverage uh, Show, and they had Nigerian exhibitors that were there, you know, they actually were representing Man Manufacturers Association of Nigeria. And you could see that they didn't understand the market they were coming into. You know, they had Gary, you know, Bobo Gary, as they call it, in white nylon. You know, no label, no nobody, you know, will ever take you serious if you do such. So, again, the packaging is very, very key. It needs to be catchy. It needs, and then, like I said, the nutritional content must be big with the calories as big as possible. That is what everybody checks. So those are some key uh, vitals that if you can follow this, your product will be a success. And like I said, when we decide to work with you, um, if we are going to be handling your Amazon sales, uh, we are going to look at all these things because we don't want a situation where after 90 days your product does not sell and we have to send it back to you free. So we are going to look at all this, work with you. And again, when I say we are ready to work with you, we are looking at people who already have something in place. When you come to me and you say, oh, I want to uh, export palm oil, how do I start? You know, I mean, how do I start? My question is, will probably be, you know, what do you want me to do? But I have given you all the lectures, all the series you need to go and start something. If it's fashion, I have given you everything you need. Find your niche. Don't, you know, I, I receive a lot of DMs. Somebody wants to do palm oil. He says, I want to do either palm oil or uh, cashew nut. Or... No, there should be no or. You should be certain, decisive on, on what you want to do. You know, so so that is that. Again, let's look at the shipping documentation because these are the things that are um, uh, is so so important. Again, and so that I don't waste time, I've already put a sample uh, of what you have on a commercial invoice that you are going to use for your product when you are exporting. Now, a good a good uh, what do you call it? A good uh, shipping company that knows how to bring foods in will, will, will guide you on this. And again, you have to be careful. Like I said, I was in the office here in Houston. A lady came, she spent so much money to bring in 300 kilograms of pomo, you know, fried, you know, and she told me that the U.S. Customs seized it, that how can we help? And I told her really that there's not much. Those pomo should not have left in the first place. You know, because there is it's not every country that the U.S. will allow food products uh, to come from. You know, so again, make sure you are working with somebody who knows what they are doing uh, before you export it. So the documents I said you need when you are exporting, I will go through them again, but I'm going to uh, work on the commercial invoice here. So like I said, you need to start with the CAC, uh, export license, NAVDAC. Certificate of Origin, Nigerian Export Proceeds Form, Commercial Invoice, Packing List, and in certain cases, a Food Analysis Report. But a lot of these things, once you do it once, that is it. So, let's look at what you have on a sample commercial invoice when you are, you are sending. Oh, I forgot a very important section. I did not treat the U.S. laws as it uh, partakes to uh, getting things here. This is very important. I am so sorry, and I'm going to have to go back to that series. So, 
Just like you have NAFDAQ, you have what you call FDA, Food and Drug Administration in the US. They control anything that has to do with food, right? So before, take, listen carefully to this, what I'm going to say here can save you 200,000 Naira straight out the door. Why do I say it? Because there are a lot of people out there in Nigeria, a lot of companies who are telling people that want to export food that they need to pay them. In fact, a lot of them charge anywhere from 200,000 200, to 250,000 to help you get an FDA license. And you know what? FDA license is virtually free. So listen carefully to what I'm going to say here. So FDA registration is what you need. It's like the NAVDAQ of the US before food comes in. Very, very important. If you are shipping in commercial quantity, you must have an FDA license. And if you look at the commercial sample commercial invoice here, and I will explain this uh, more in depth. This is somebody who is exporting a potato. So under the product, is potato the description potato chips is very important you know you describe it so that customs will know what it is you are bringing in we have a lot of products that they don't have here so you need to describe it well the weight of each is uh, 30 grams she's the person is shipping 100 the total weight is 3 kg all this is in one box and then you have the composition. Composition is very important, especially for products that they don't know. So composition here, you have, you know, it's just like the breakdown of the analysis. But the key thing I'm trying to show you here is here. You see here, this is FDA number. Without this FDA number, we cannot process commercial quantity of food for you. And it is virtually free to get. So I'm going to talk more about it. And there are processes that needs to happen. You know, and again, these processes need to be followed. Before you export things under FDA, there's what you call a pre-entry alert, which means whoever is your shipping company ought to file all this documentation that says certain type of food is coming into the US and then they monitor it. So again, FDA, how do you get it? Their website, fda.gov. But their website can be very challenging. So take note of this uh, URL, access.fda.gov. I'll write it here on the board in red. Access, A, uh, let me write it so that it's big, is, is what you really, really, really need. Access, A, C, C, E, S, S, dot, fda.gov so access.fda.gov will give you the link to directly go and file for your FDA certificate so what happens there when you go there you look for what they call food facility registration food facility registration now why is this registration important so, for example, you are making plantain chips and you are shipping it to the U.S. And they discover that, oh, there's a, 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 an outbreak, you know, maybe a coli or some bacteria. They trade, people are eating it and are getting sick. They trace it back to your particular plantain chips. Why they need that facility registered is such that they will be able to go in and say, okay, this thing came in through FDA number 111111. And then they, they go back to their record. They see that, oh, it is a facility in Oyo State, Nigeria. What they will now do is they will contact the local facility, the local FDA uh, inspection team in Nigeria. I think the inspection team they have for Nigeria is out of Ghana, I believe so. They will now contact them and then they will go to that facility. They will work with Nigerian government. Obviously, they're going to shut down their facility. They will stop you from uh, bringing things until you meet certain demands. And again, as you are beginning to grow in volume, you know, food is something that, look, it needs to be done right because it's what people eat. You cannot be doing uh, food export from, you know, the back of your house that is dirty, no. Once you've registered with FDA, as they begin to see your food coming, 
they will send some of those inspectors to inspect your facility unannounced. You know, and again, all the guide you need is there on the fda.gov website. Everything, who they, they process, what they need to inspect, what they expect of you, go there. But again, when you are registering for an FDA license, the only challenge you will have is that you need to have a contact person here in the U.S. to use as your contact point uh, for all your imports, or all your exports. You know, and if we are working with you, we will be your contact point in the process of you. If you don't have family and friend that you can use, and the essence of the contact point is, if there's any issue, they first get across to them, you know, and they help you with that. So again, the FDA registration is virtually free. Uh, you can do a lot from it. Uh, you can file for it uh, if there's a, a, you know, look for the food facility license. You need to renew your FDA every two years. Uh, there are processes. So on the commercial invoice, we must list your FDA number. And then before the thing gets to the US, it has to go. So I already treated how to prepare commercial invoice in a series two, Essentials of Export. So I'm not gonna go too deep into it. The only difference between the normal commercial invoice and that for food are two things, you know, the composition and the inclusion of the FDA number. Apart from that, there is no other difference. So every commercial invoice will have to have what it, obviously the address of the sender, uh, whoever it is. So typically this should be on your letterhead or your, your invoice. So when you are exporting, you, mo you modify that invoice uh, to suit this. So obviously with your letterhead it will have your address and then whoever it is that you are sending it to is there. Now you see where it says country of origin. Typically if you have different items you can put country of origin separately. But since all of this is coming from Nigeria you can just put country of origin there Nigeria. So they know it's coming from Nigeria. And obviously you know, whenever you're exporting a lot of items, uh, it's always good to have serial number. Because see, when what you need to know about the U.S. customs, you know, we've been working with them for over 10 years now, since 2009. So we know how they operate. When they see your documentation and it is not done properly, they begin to suspect that, oh, these guys don't know what they are doing. And that is when they now start checking, they start asking for so many things. But when they see your documentation, everything is intact, everything is correct, it is easy to pinpoint anything, most times you don't have issues. So again, all commercial invoice will have the product, it will have the description. The description uh, at times take something like um, alligator pepper, for example, you know, Alligator pepper um, may, you know, most customs people will not know what alligator pepper is. So that is why the description is important. And then again, at times the composition also helps them to, to know what it is. So again, you have the product, you have the description, uh, the weight, typically the weight of each package, the quantity, the total weight, uh, the number of boxes, so all this is designed such that when they look at your, your entry invoice, it is very easy for them to know uh, what it is you are bringing. Uh, the composition, you know, part of your food analysis can be here. Uh, a lot of times you already know what a lot of this food contains. So that is that. And then again, that's why I keep saying you need to find a niche and focus. You know, because imagine like some of you will say, I want to uh, do palm oil, I want to do this, I want to do that, you, you know, I want to do a father rice, I want to do a, a father beans. By the time you are doing so many of that, you have to get a NAFDAQ for this, you have to get a composition analysis for this. At the end of the day, it becomes too, too, too many things that you're asking for. So really, really focus. You have the unit price, total price, and then your FDA number. So this is you know what will work um you can do so many uh, there are many ways of doing this but this works and then again 
uh, the other thing you will need is uh, the packing list. Packing list is virtually the same as commercial invoice, but typically uh, you don't need to have the pricing on the packing list and you need to have the dimensions of the boxes. I also treated that in a series two. So if you don't know how to make a packing list, go back and uh, rewatch series two. Uh, I treated that there. So commercial invoice, once you have the template, is virtually the same as uh, your packing list. It will have virtually the same thing. The only difference is you don't need to put the prices and we need to have the dimensions of the boxes. The essence is that when they look at a box, they have issue, they see your commercial or your packing list, they want to find what is in that box. Remember, these people are dealing with tons and tons of shipments coming in. So make it easy for them. That way you don't have any problem. So again, uh, that's that on FBA. Uh, we have 10 more minutes to go. Like I, I say, I always like to make it uh, um, uh, as short as possible. So the last one I'd like to talk about again is when you are thinking of uh, what to do. Second thing you need to consider is the shelf life of the product that you are interested in. So when I, when I say shelf life is, are you, um, you know, looking at, you, it's very hard to do perishables, you know, so you want to start bringing, um, uh, you know, maybe packaged stew or packaged uh, goosey. There are some people that do it, but, you know, to do that, you need specialized machines that will package and seal those type of things, make sure they are airtight. You know, but it's always easier to start with the dry food, the nuts, you know, the tiger nuts, the dried sour soap leaves, uh, peanuts, granuts, uh, cashew nuts, those type of things, because these things have a, a longer shelf life, you know. So those are some of the things. Look at the type of things that uh, you, you believe... Um, uh, uh, will have a long shelf life and then and then focus on that um, I think that that's that's basically it on food you know so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I will give people you know because I've had so many requests on food um, I will give people the opportunity to ask questions um, so whatever questions you have go ahead ask I am here. Uh, we have another uh, seven, eight minutes. So let me see your questions. Uh, we'll treat it. I'll treat it as much as I can. Um, again, my my advice to you really is find a niche, focus on that niche, uh, and you know uh, become the best in that niche. Don't try to do so many things. You know, find one product that you know you can get at, at wholesale. It's not going to be difficult for you, and that is it. Do we need a GOA certificate? That is a question. So basically, there is really nothing like a GOA certificate. I haven't heard about that. Um, a GOA just means that is a legislation, right? So whoever is doing the export will indicate on it that you are claiming a goa so whoever is the shipping company they are the ones that will indicate that okay you are shipping a goa you talked about the license that we need to have before going into export of food can you give the total amount to get all the certificate required in this so again that is something you will have to research cac license you know is a business name a registration of business name uh, i don't know what it is uh, NEPC, the export license is not very expensive. It's you know a few, maybe two, three thousand, um, uh, and then um, the 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 one from a certificate of origin. Uh, that I don't know what it is now, but you get that from manufacturers association. So anywhere roughly in the range of I would say fifty to a hundred thousand, you should be able to get this. So somebody is asking, must one register as LLC in the USA? No, 
you can actually import things into the US in your own personal name. The advantage of registering as an LLC is that you are now separating yourself from the company. So if somebody sues the company, say you did something wrong, it is the liabilities of the company that is that that will be used and not uh, your own personal liability. So you can do that. Becoming a mini, mini exporter of food, do I need NAVDAC FDA? As long as you are exporting food to resell in commercial quantity, you need to have the FDA. It's actually cheaper, I think, to get the FDA than the NAVDAC, but the NAVDAC is important. I produce Gary and I'm interested in exporting, but the issue of NAVDAC registration is expensive and it will affect my capital. So, Again, somebody said the CAC won't cost more than 40 to 50K. Thank you for that information. Um, the issue of NAVDAC, and again, this is where we have problems with our government and their seriousness with export. Um, they should make this, these things affordable. There's, there's no reason why you, sh you, you should be paying so much to get your NAVDAC license. Is it feasible to start the import business if you are based in Nigeria? If their partnership is there a way to find their suppliers looking to ship to the US. So again, go to series three. I treated finding uh, buyers uh, in that series. If I want to bring food in for myself, what are the limitations of items? So if you are bringing in for yourself, as long as it's not commercial quantity, we will not worry about uh, FDA and all that. For US, for us with bad network, how can we get a follow up? Sorry about your bad network. Um, I will post this video hopefully within the next two days on YouTube. Uh, so you should have it there. And um, you know, sorry about that. Uh, any other questions? I don't see any new question. Or if you ask a question and it scrolled up, uh, just re ask it again if I have not answered you. Um, we still have time. Uh, so uh, whatever question. And again, look, we. I don't know how we will do it in Nigeria. We need to push our government to reduce the cost of some of these things. There is no reason uh, why you should be paying 100,000 or whatever it is to get a NAVDAC certificate. It's not good. Please, what is the best packaging option for dried snails, please? I haven't packaged, done dried snails. And I don't know, I'll need to research that. So send me a DM, I'll look into that for you. I'll ask, uh, you know, from our people if we can bring in snails. Now the US is cautious about uh, bringing in animal products uh, because of diseases and, and that. How do I partner with you? Very good question. Uh, I'll treat that on Friday when I treat the series on selling on Amazon. So tune in on Friday, uh, it will be very, very interesting series. Do we actually need NEPF for small export, NEPC certificate? Okay, okay, NEPX, Nigerian Export Proceeds Form. Uh, it depends, I think there's a limit on the value, I'm not too sure. Uh, you know, I think there's a limit on the value before you need Nigerian Export Proceeds Form. But that, you know, Google it, call your bank, they will tell you what that limit is. Um, can you recommend a company that can produce packaged nylons? I mean, good designs. There are many companies in Nigeria that can do that. I don't know any. Google it. Google is your friend. Packaging companies in Nigeria will give you uh, that. What is an email address to send my questions? Just send to me on DM. What time on Friday? The series is every 7 p.m. Tuesday. I think our last lecture will be the upper Friday because I wanted to do it during this lockdown when people are down. 7 p.m. on Friday. Um, any other question? I'm not seeing any new question. We still have two minutes. Two minutes. Um, how can I get your email address? Just send me a DM. I respond to all my DMs. Uh, do we need any certificate from man? So that's a very good question. Yes, uh, to do export in certain volumes, you need to get what you call certificate of origin. And remember, AGOA has to deal 
with uh, verifying that whatever it is you are bringing is coming from uh, an Agoa eligible country so that you don't pay duties. So MAN is where you get your certificate of origin. Um, how do I go about exporting my shoes? So shoe by home Hemomaki, tune in on Friday, please. Friday, 7 p.m. We will go into all that. But please go and uh, watch the series on uh, fashion. You know, it will help you a lot. But Friday, 7 p.m., I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Amazon and how we're going to help you sell your products there. My question on series four, can the storage cost at your warehouse be negotiated? The storage cost I gave was actually very small. You have, you have a box that will take, um, take about 20 shirts and we are storing it for $10 a month. You know, so that comes out to about uh, 50 cents per shirt. You know, I think it's very reasonable. But yes, if you have bigger quantities, then we can look into that. Do you have a list of buyers in the States? Go to series three and find your buyers. Mini export of beta cola, 2.5 kg quantity, needing a lot of documentation too. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, does sun regulate export some type of exports they do all right guys um it's one hour i have a lot of other things to do uh so thank you all for for tuning in how about tiger but for exportation i don't know what tiger is maybe she means tiger not for export but again, you know, if you go through all this process, you have everything you need, you know. Um, Rewatch this video, it will take care of all. So again, thank you all for tuning in. I hope we are going to practicalize these things, you know. A lot of you already have businesses that are into food, that are into clothes. We can easily get started with you. But for those who are just starting up, go through some of this series work on building them gradually so for tiger nuts tiger nut is very very lucrative let's not joke about it very very lucrative you can see the prices on amazon so again thank you all uh see you on friday friday we'll be talking about uh export of um uh friday we'll be talking about amazon uh how to sell on Amazon using I'll show you everything the cost every single thing so thank you all see you on Friday